Hello, good evening, everyone. I forget something. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. How are you doing? Good evening. Are you guys doing okay? Hi, teacher. Kind I'm of, okay. right? Okay, good, good. Great. Okay. And you? Uh, I'm okay too. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, okay. I'm seeing that my uh, my virtual background is not. Second, Let's see. That's it. I have it. Sarah, do you mind? Uh, All right, I think everything is better now. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry it was, you know, technician problems, technical problems. All right, but now we are ready. Okay, then let's start, guys. I will call the uh, call the roll. So remember, you have to turn your cameras on, and also you have to say present when I call your name. All right. I will start doing this because that's the requirement. That's the, uh, the first step in the agenda. So Andrea Sofia Benitez Gomez, Blanca Alejandra Portillo Bermúdez, Carlos Ernesto Pérez, Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. Present teacher. Right. What's going on here? Oh, sorry. All right, thank you, Carlos. Claudia Yamilet Coreas. La Claudia Yamilet Coreas. Hoy la esperábamos por acá. No, okay. Ah, uh, maybe later, right? Ellen Nilsson Aparicio del CID. Present teacher. Okay. Eric Jose Hernandez Campos. Eric, not yet. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. Henry Alberto Perez Rosales. Good evening, teacher. Thank Just you. in time. Yes, there you are. Just point. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Hernán Antonio Chacón López. Your microphone, you're muted. All right. Good. Good. Javier Antonio Cortés Martínez. Ah, you told me, you told me I, I can't. Uh, have that in mind. Juan Francisco Salmerón Alas. Juan Francisco Salmerón Alas. No, Juan. All right. Karen Yamilet Rivas de Ayala. Very good. teacher. All right. Uh, Magdiel Esau García Morales. Present teacher. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz. Present teacher. Rafael Antonio Barrera Díaz. Not yet. Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. Good night, everybody. Hello, Present good evening. Teacher. Welcome. All right. 
Rosa del Carmen Santa María Tobar. Rosa. Santos Ezequiel Núñez Mejía. Present teacher. Ok. Wilber Alberto Pérez Méndez. Present teacher. All right. José Isabel, perdón, José Abel Isaguirre Mendoza. Not yet. Ok. Pedro Alexander Osorto Sánchez. Pedro, no Pedro yet. All right. Okay, people, we are going to start uh, by saying some things that are very important for us to take in consideration uh, in this co in this course. Not Did only in this course. All right, I will take you in right now. Just give me one second. Okay. Thank you very much, Carlos, for letting me know. Uh, some details that are very important uh, along the course. It's not only for this module. Thing is that we have to be um, a committed, right? Tenemos que comprometernos un poquito. De aquí en adelante, um, podemos decir que, bueno, desde el 1 hay cosas que las han visto entre intermedio y avanzado, unos pincelazos, ¿verdad? Pero ahorita, ahorita vamos a ya entrando en eh, frases más estructuradas, ¿verdad? Vamos entrando en conversaciones un poquito más elaboradas. Ya no es solo la presentación personal, ya no es solo la presentación de mis obligaciones, sino que ahora ya estamos agregando procesos, ¿verdad? Procesos de las cosas ya más en específico de las cosas que hacemos. Por ejemplo, antes decíamos, I send an email, for example, right? Then you have to explain what kind of emails, what do you write in your emails, how do you do it, right? Y la pregunta principal en este módulo es, how do you... Hello, José Abel. Welcome. A casa. <laughs> okay, great, great. Uh, y la pregunta principal de este módulo es prácticamente how do you do something, All right? Entonces, si vamos a empezar ya a pasar de las preguntas eh, básicas, ya vamos entrando como eh, eh, decimos así, ¿verdad? Como tentando ya por el intermedio, ¿verdad? O sea, vamos, el 5 el y el 6 prácticamente es un pasito, ¿verdad? Es un pasito para el intermedio. Y hay que empezar a ver las frases estructuradas de una manera sencilla y hay que agarrarlas una por una, ¿verdad? Para que no nos complique, digamos, la existencia, ¿verdad? Pero el asunto que les quiero decir es que tenemos el manual, tenemos la plataforma, tenemos a la teacher, tenemos el grupo de WhatsApp, tenemos a los demás compañeros que también les podemos preguntar y nos pueden también dar como peer assessment, ¿verdad? Como un eh, asesoría entre compañeros, ¿verdad? Lo que yo entendí, lo que tú entendiste y veamos, comprobemos con el libro, comprobemos con la teacher, ¿verdad? Pero el peer assessment es muy importante que usted escuche a su compañero y usted le pueda decir a su compañero, mira, yo creo que se dice así, o mira, eh, debemos hacerlo de esta manera, ¿verdad? Y ahorita ya vamos entrando en el momento en que esa estrategia debe ser puesta en práctica. ¿Cuál estrategia? En que nosotros lo que hemos aprendido, ¿verdad? Se lo podamos decir a otro. Así nuestro cerebro lo va a procesar mucho mejor y después vamos a abrir los ojos más a cosas que probablemente no habíamos visto cuando se lo explicamos a alguien, ¿verdad? Entonces voy a pedirles ese favor eh, de que cuando estamos en los grupos, ¿verdad? No tengan pena entre ustedes de decirse, mira, esto se dice así, mira, esto se dice así, o preguntarle a su compañero, mire, usted sabe cómo se dice esto, ¿verdad? Hay una aplicación que yo les quería recomendar, se llama eh, reverso.net, ¿verdad? Esa aplicación, eh, bueno, para el teléfono la pueden instalar si quieren, hay gra gratis y todo, pero también puede ser solamente un asunto de consulta. Usualmente nos vamos al Google Translate, ¿verdad? 
pero el Google Translate sí es completo, es muy completo. Eh, tiene diferentes eh, opciones, digamos, ¿verdad? Pero eh, reverso.net nos da, eh, recoge de toda la red eh, a ejemplos como los que ponía yo ahora en, en, en el WhatsApp. ¿Se recuerdan que en el WhatsApp les puse una serie de ejemplos? Yes, that one. Uh, esa es otra. Esa es uh, Grammarly. Uh -huh. Grammarly es when you are writing. Eh, cuando usted está escribiendo y le, y le corrige prácticamente, es como un, eh, ¿cómo se llama esto? Un, un, un revisor ortográfico, un re, revisor gramático, un revisor de contexto. Pero reverso.net es como un método de consulta, ¿verdad? Usted hace la entrada y le da ejemplos. Está reverso.net de contexto, hay otras. Eh, solo de traducción, hay de sinónimos, right y claro que pueden usar un, un buen diccionario también para poder traducir. Yo les recomiendo no traducir. Ahorita tratemos de usar todo el vocabulario que hemos aprendido ya haciendo conceptos, ¿verdad? Ok, después de haber dicho todo esto, ah, el diccionario que a mí más o menos me gusta, bueno, me gusta el Merriam-Webster, pero eh, también eh, la aplicación del Oxford es muy buena y es amigable, ¿verdad? O sea, es bastante fácil de utilizar. Uh, eh, del diccionario Oxford. Eh, personalmente me gusta, ¿verdad? Ahí, eh, si usted lo mira y pues no le gusta, pues también, ¿verdad? Ok, usted puede ser, usar el que con el que se ha familiarizado. Bien. We're going to start a class now. Uh, we're going to introduce the class and then we are going to do some exercises. All right. Then I'm going to tell you about... Uh, an activity that we want to do for next week, all right? Uh, because we are finishing on next Wednesday, right? So we finish, okay, Wednesday, uh, uh -huh, Tuesday, and then Wednesday we start the next unit, right? So uh, for Wednesday, we're gonna do a presentation, all right? And I will tell you the uh, guidelines how to do that, all right? But now let me introduce the class. And, well, let's remember that we are in unit one. A ver, ¿cómo se llama nuestra unidad uno? What's the topic for unit one, the general topic? Manufacturing. Manufacturing, great. And what is manufacturing? What is manufacturing? Um, steps for final uh, step for the process product. Okay, is uh, okay. You said steps, right? Steps. Eh, se pronuncia con la letra e así. Steps, right? Uh, for processing. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bien. Cuando vamos a contestar una pregunta, tip para todos. Eh, what is manufacturing? Comenzamos con lo primero. It's, right? It's to process, it's processing, it's transforming, right? And then we start giving the uh, answer we want to say, right? Okay, he said steps for a process of making a product. Is, is that correct? All right, wait a bit. What is manufacturing? Uh, manufacturing is uh, it's a factory uh, where you process a raw material for a good, uh, for a good, um, I forget that word. Finished goods. Uh, finished goods. All right. Mm -hmm. Into finished goods. All right, good. Mm -hmm. So manufacturing is that transforming and it's a very uh, elaborated process, right? It has steps, it has a sequence, right? And sometimes it's just logic, but maybe if uh, each company has its own, depending on the product they produce, right? Because they can use tools, uh, handy tools, right? Or they can use also machinery, 
right? Or they can do these things by chemical processing, like uh, cheese, for example, they add some chemicals for it to produce, right? The, for it to produce the cheese, right? Uh, we can say the, um, uh, there are other, other kind of products, but the uh, uh, products that we are talking when we talk about manufacturing, tangible products, things that we can see, thing that, things that we can use, they have a function, right? And they are, um, you know, uh, tangible, right? Tangible, right? Okay, th yes, that's manufacturing. The topic for tonight is how to use imperatives, how to use imperatives. I know that you know what imperatives are, right? What are the imperatives? Henry. I don't have an idea. Don't you have any idea right now? All right. When you see the examples, you're gonna say, oh yes, it's that, all right. Uh, let's see, Ellen Nielsen, do you know what imperatives are? Uh, I have an idea. It, it's, uh, I don't know, to give uh, orders, maybe? Yes, to give orders. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Okay, then. Okay, then the objective for tonight is that by the end of this lesson, you will be able to use imperatives to tell someone how to do something. Hasta este momento hemos aprendido los imperativos como una orden, ¿verdad? Pero los imperativos tienen muchos usos. Decíamos muchas veces que ay, eh, no utilizamos el imperativo para dar una orden más en estos tiempos, ¿verdad? Que se siente como pesado, que lo ofendió porque le dio una orden directa, cosas así. Pero imperativos no es malo, ¿ok? Eh, tal vez teníamos ese concepto antes, pero... Y usamos please, ¿verdad? Usamos please para esos imperativos, para no parecer mandón. Pero el día de hoy vamos a agregar algunos otros usos. All right, some other uses, even though we are going to talk about the instructions and commands. Instructions and commands. So the agenda for tonight is the feedback about the, the what clauses. Then we are going to have some imperative chart briefing. Uh, then we're going to the breakout rooms with a conversation using these imperatives in context, right? Then we have some written exercises and pay on page 14. And we want to talk about a discussion activity on the platform, English, I mean, English Corporativo platform, right? The session one on one for tonight is for Carlos Ernesto Perez. Carlos Ernesto, estará available para ahora? Yes, teacher. All right, good, good. Okay. Then let's start by our feedback, right? Do you remember what what clauses are? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about it? Uh, for example, what I would do and mm -hmm. what, I, when, what I'm saying mm -hmm. is uh, this example. And other example is uh, what my friend did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, All right. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, those are clauses that by themselves, they don't have a meaning, right? So they need another clause to complete the sentence. And it has a structure. The structure is that it starts with the word what, then it has a, a subject, and also it has a verb, right? So you are going to find in the structure of the what clauses, the what word, then the subject for that clause and the verb, right? Okay. And the examples that Magdiel said, they were like this one, right? What I'm saying, it's an example. 
what my friend did, it's another example. What I will do, it's another example. And anything that you want to um, emphasize that you are going to do, that, um, mm, that it's kind of a concept or a noun, right? In the sentence, then you are going to use this clause, okay? To give kind of an emphasis, right? Kind of a, an emphasis of this thing that you were going to say that this friend did. Because I can say, my friend got fresh ingredients, right? My friend got fresh in ingredients. Ah, but if I do it, uh, like my thesis, right, or my um, emphasis, what my friend did, so it's very important what I'm going to say was get fresh ingredients, right? So giving a little more importance, uh, importance, right? Okay, so we were talking about the processes and the steps in uh, manufacturing uh, and a manufacturing process or in any process, right? And also there we use these clauses, right? We use these clauses. So uh, I just want you to see some, some something about the structure, the structure of the what clauses, right? So let's remember the examples. The examples were uh, what my friend did, what I'm saying, what the product, what the customer wants, right? So those are what clauses. Let's choose between the options they are giving us here, which one of those are, is the correct one to complete the statement or the sentence, right? Remember that a clause is not a complete sentence, it's just a clause. So we need the other clause to have a meaning. All right, number one, it says, we are not responsible for, is it correct to say letter A or letter B? Letter A or letter B? Letter A. Okay, can you tell me why? Uh, His, his, or uh, he, or uh, uh, they are explaining uh, what happened. I don't know. Uh, uh, like you say, like they say, uh, we are not responsible for for what you say. Uh, uh, I don't know how to explain. All right, wait a bit. Here we are just asking about the structure, right? What mm -hmm. structure is the correct one? Do we need an auxiliar ver an auxiliar verb in a what clause? We don't, right? We don't need. So we use the the tense that correspond, right? So mm -hmm. we are gonna say letter A, right? There you are. Okay. Thank you very much. Number two. Is it true mm -hmm, about you? In this case, there, 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 there be. Mm -hmm. I say letter, letter E. Okay, let's look at this as a question, right? This is a question. Do you remember we were saying that there is a main question and there are other questions in the question? Do you, do you remember that? So when we add another question into the question, we don't use any other uh, auxiliary uh, or helping verb, right? So we could say, is it true what she said about you, All right? Porque yo estoy preguntando if it is true, right? I'm not asking, I'm not asking uh, <clears throat> what did he say? Because I know what he said, right? 
I know what, oh, I'm sorry, she said, right? So I'm not asking that. There we are. A ver, vamos a ver. Number three. Letter B. Uh -huh. Why do we use uh, letter, letter B? Because the sentence is, is uh, what he did, uh, lo que él hizo fue muy romántico. Exactly. It's, mm -hmm. it's an affirmative. Affirmative, yes. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Let's look at number four. Letter B. All right. Why letter B? Is it a question? Letter A. Letter A. The ah, sentence. Yes. The sentence, is, right. Yes. It's letter is, A. Yes. It is letter A. Mm -hmm. Find out what they know about manufacturing leather bags, right? All right, entonces veamos la estructura de las que hemos seleccionado. ¿Verdad que no utilizamos en, en estas cláusulas? No utilizamos el auxiliar porque no lo necesitamos. No es una pregunta, ¿ok? It's not a question, right? Aunque veamos what ahí, no es una pregunta, por lo tanto no vamos a usar, miren, esto, right? Ok, vamos a ver next. Exercise. These are uh, little details, right? These are little details about the what clause, right? So let's look at this. We have to match the numbers with the letters, right? To complete the meaning or to complete the sentence to make it meaningful, right? Okay, so. Pueden entrar a la pantalla. Can you uh, come to the board, please? And make a line. You may draw a line to match which, um, what clause complete, uh, completes the sentence. Ok, me voy a poner en silencio y los voy a dejar que entren a la pantalla. Hacen ustedes el match. Ok, ¿cuál de estas cláusulas completan estas oraciones para dar un significado completo? ¿Saben todos entrar a la pantalla? Perdón, no pregunté eso. Hay algunos que son nuevos por acá. Eh, ¿Saben todos cómo entrar a la pantalla? Arriba en el menú de Zoom, ustedes van a encontrar un lapicito que dice anotar. Le dan clic en anotar y eh, les va a aparecer otro menú. Ahí le ponen ustedes dibujar. ¿Ok? Los que están desde teléfono, ok, los, eh, o de tablet, ¿verdad? Eh, pueden ingresar solo 
pónganse sobre la, la pantalla donde estamos ahorita, pónganse si muevan su dedo ahí y les va a aparecer abajo en una esquina, les va a aparecer un lapicito en un círculo. Le dan clic en ese círculo con el lapicito y ya van a poder hacerlo con su dedo. Ok, vamos a ver. Eh, tenemos por ahí a Hernán, ¿verdad? Hernán. Hi. Uh, what is the what clause you matched for number one? Um, letter C. Letter C. Coca Cola knows what Leah enjoys most. Mm. Yes. Okay. What do you think, guys? Do you agree? No. I'm no? not agree. I don't agree. I don't agree. All right. Okay. Bien. Voy a borrar. I will delete all the drawings and we are going to do it again, all right? Y ahorita ya se familiarizaron con lo que dice ahí, okay? So we are going to do the match. Hernan says one with letter C. What do you think, guys? For me, it's number one. Uh, letter B. I think it's better uh, Coca-Cola knows what customers want. All right. Yeah, letter B. All right, letter B. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hernan, hay que leerlo ahorita. Coca-Cola knows what customers want. All right. Coca-Cola knows what, what customers, customers want. want. Yes. Want. Okay. All right, number two, number two, let's, uh, let's have Claudia, welcome. Uh, can you tell me what is the answer for uh, number two? Mm. 
Number two, sería the lady boat. Um, little C, what lady enjoy most? What Leah enjoys most. Okay, everybody agrees? Yes. I think so. Okay, it fulfilled, right? It fulfilled the meaning. It fulfilled the meaning, but let's look at uh, others that maybe uh, have a closer meaning or a close, the, the closest meaning, right? Okay. I, I think teacher maybe uh, letter D. Letter D. All right. D. Can you read it, please? The lady bought. The lady bought when was on sale. It sounds better, right? It sounds better, right? Okay, I will match this, all right? And then I'm going to explain some uh, little details. Number three, number three, uh, can you tell me what you, what do you think is the answer, Rafael Alexander? Number three? Uh, I think it's uh, letter C. Do what Leah enjoys most to help others. All right, it fulfills the meaning too. It fulfills the meaning too. What? What? <laughs> uh huh? Mm. What you uh, can? Even, oh, sorry. Tell me a little bit. Tell me a little bit. Uh, no, uh, I didn't match the sentences. Uh, uh, what says uh, my Rafa classmate Rafa Rafael? Uh -huh. I didn't match the, the, the question with do, with uh, what, because what is it's always. So, like, for example, uh, uh, no, I don't know. I didn't match it. Uh huh. All right. All right. The, the number three and number four. You did. You you don't have an answer no, for it. No. Uh, for them. All right. Let's, Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Number three. Number three. It's an expression, right? Haz lo que puedas para ayudar a otros, right? It's kind of an advice, right? So do what you can to help others. Sería la respuesta. All right. Do what you can to help others. It's kind of an advice or a quote, right? Mm -hmm. Now, number four. Y yo les puse todavía en mayúscula, miren esta, para que vieran que este sí es sujeto, right? So what Leah enjoys most is to play the piano. Bueno, ayer decíamos Teacher. que... Uh -huh. Leah, it's a mom. It's yeah, a name. It's a name. Uh, I searched in my in the translator and says Lea, like uh, leer in español. Oh no no. And and then uh, so. No, <laughs> Leah is a name. That is why it doesn't it doesn't have a, a translation, right? It doesn't have uh -huh. a translation. Uh, that is why I, I couldn't match the sentence. Oh right, all right. Okay, here we were talking about a person, right? What Lee enjoys most, right, is to play the piano. A ver, no siempre, no siempre, la, la noun clause is going to be a subject. Ayer, yesterday, we said that a clause could be a direct object and also it could be a complement of the subject, right? Tiene diferentes funciones dentro de la oración. Entonces, ustedes van a encontrar estas cláusulas no solo en, la, en el inicio de la oración, ¿ok? Las pueden encontrar eh, casi que en cualquier posición de la oración, dándole, um, ampliando el significado de la oración, ¿ok? Entonces, por ejemplo, cuando aprendimos la voz pasiva, hablábamos del objeto directo. El objeto directo en una oración es el que recibe directamente la acción del verbo, ¿verdad? Entonces, no nos vamos a meter más a gramática, solo quiero que vean que después de un verbo, ¿ok? 
Después de un verbo, ustedes pueden tener una eh, what clause. All right? Después, miren, de el verbo, ustedes pueden tener una what clause. ¿Sí? Vemos. The lady bought what was on sale. All right? Do what you can. Y esta que es un subject. Este sí es un sujeto completo. Todo esto es el sujeto. Miren, todo, todo, todas las palabras. Porque es una cláusula. Si no van juntas estas palabras, no es una cláusula. Right? It's not a clause. Espero que quede comprendido hasta ahí. Cualquier cosa, ahí está en la plataforma para poder practicar pero quiero que vayamos a completar lo que vimos el día de ayer en el manual, ya para finalizar nuestro feedback del día de hoy. Cerrar acá. So we were on page 12, if I'm not wrong, right? We were on page 12. On, pa on page 12, we have to complete some sentences to give the complete meaning to the sentence using, using the what clauses. So let's go over there and we are going to um, complete with the what clauses we have on a table there, right? There is a table. Okay. Here we are. Okay, we have these uh, examples we saw yesterday. What you need, what my friend did, what I will do, what I'm saying is, right? Estas, vamos a utilizarlas y darle sentido a estas oraciones o estos statements, right? So, number one, who wants to read number one? Todos le vamos a ayudar a eh, completarla, pero alguien que me lo quiera leer. Volunteer. May I, teacher? Yes, please, Carlos. Go ahead. Okay. My best friend just opened his own shop. And the answer is um, what Ever I'm saying is was open it in a good uh i i don't i'm sorry the, the camps don't a uh, mall a good mall no what what i'm say saying is was open it in a good mall uh okay no. let's um we're going to use this right and i want to hear the opinion of everybody here in the class all right so please, everybody open your microphones and give an opinion. Which, what clause fulfill the meaning in this sentence? Let's help Carlos Roberto. To be what my friend did. Everybody agrees? I agree. 
I think the same. I yes, agree. I agree. All right. I agree. Entonces, Carlos Roberto, then Carlos Roberto, here it sounds better if we write what my friend did. Why? Because in the first sentence, they are talking about a friend, right? So what my friend did. And then we use was open it in a good mood, right? Okay, teacher, uh, uh, I read the game. Yes, please, go ahead. Okay, okay. My best friend just opened his old shop. What my friend did was opening a good mall. Very good. There you are. Thank you, Carlos. Okay. Hey, Sal, can you read number two, please? And everybody's going to help you, okay, to give the answer. Can I? Uh, okay. Yes, because I, I don't see Hazel answer. All right. All right. Please, Karen. Okay. Listener teacher. Oh, really? Yeah, she wrote in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rafael. I didn't notice it. Thank you. Okay, Karen, then please, please do number two. Okay. Many people want to start their our business. Uh, what you need is lots of information. Right. Everybody agrees? Mm -hmm. ¿Cómo sería la, la cláusula otra vez, Karen? Okay. Many people want to start their own business. What you need is... I can see. Okay, okay. Okay, what you need is right well even though is it is right there okay okay yes okay does it sound good yeah good. right yeah. has it a meaning yeah all right number three please can you do number three jose abel okay I don't know where she has to start. Please promote the products online. Uh -huh. Okay, everybody, let's help Jose Abel to uh, find out which, what class we want to use there. What I would, what I would do, I think so. Mm -hmm. I don't know, teacher. What I am saying is. All right. Number Even three. though, uh huh, because we, the uh, subject in this sentence is I, right? Mm -hmm. You could write what I'm saying, right? Saying. Or teacher, mm -hmm. what you need? What, what you need you or need. what she needs? What you need? What she needs need is from a from a product from mine. Okay. Even though we are going to use these ones, right? These ones. I think the best one, the one that fulfilled will be what I will do as your uh, classmate said. I think it was Ellen Nielsen, right? Yes. All right. So what I will do is promote the products online, right? Just giving a kind of, of solution, right? So what I will do. Let's promote, all right? And then the last one, people mm, don't buy new products because they can't, right? 
then what what class can we use here? Santos, number four, what do you think? What class can we use? Okay. People don't buy new products because they can. Mm -hmm. What I say is is I am. Mm -hmm. What I I sign is mm -hmm. is there is no demand. Thank you very much, Santos. And yes, okay. it is correct. Okay, guys. So uh, we completed this um, topic about the what clauses, right? And I just want to mention, y solo quiero mencionarles que eh, noun clauses and dependent clauses are not only these with what, all right? Eh, puede ser también con otras palabras como whatever, right? O como that, o como who, okay? Puede empezar con esas otras, okay? Las vamos a ir viendo más adelante, ¿ok? Y cuando vayan saliendo yo se las voy a hacer notar. Y ahorita hay que volver a practicar, ¿verdad? Estas what clauses. Si ustedes las buscan para eh, practicar eh, en un libro o lo que sea, se llaman noun clauses, ¿right? Noun clauses. Si las buscan por what clauses, eh, les va a mandar a relative clauses, a verbal clauses, les va a mandar a diferentes. Entonces, para que les caiga cabalito, tienen que ponerle noun clauses. All right. Okay. We are going to continue with the imperatives. All right. So let's go to the next page in this manual. And remember, we are going to start with a conversation. Okay, so let's go to page 13. <clears throat> I will read the conversation. Please pay attention. And if you have any question about the vocabulary, you let me know when I finish the reading, all right? Hello, Mr. Roland. Today is your first day at the plant. My name is Ms. Nunez, and I'm going to explain what you must do in the production line. Nice to meet you, Ms. Nunez. Where do we start? First, you are in charge of stopping the conveyor belt. Please push this red button. Second, grab a pair of tongues and pick every piece of chocolate. Read the, this chart and check every piece. Make sure it meets this, the specifications in the chart. Third, sorry. <clears throat> Place the defective chocolate in this funnel. Finally, fill in a report at the end of the day about the defective piece, right? I will read it slower, but in a second time. Um, hello, Mr. Rowland. Today is your first day at the plant. My name is Ms. Nunez, and I'm going to explain what you must do in the production line. Nice to meet you, Miss Nunez. Where do we start? First, 
you are in charge of stopping the conveyor belt. Please push this red button. Second, grab a pair of tongs and pick every piece of chocolate. Read this chart and check every piece. Make sure <clears throat> it, I'm sorry. <coughs> okay, I will go back. Make sure, <clears throat> I'm sorry guys, one second. <clears throat> <clears throat> Make sure each meets the specifications in this chart. Third, place the defective chocolate in this funnel. Finally, fill in a report at the end of the day about the defective pieces. <clears throat> At the moment, is there any question about the vocabulary? Yeah. Uh, conveyor belt, for example, grab, tongs, and funnel. All right. The conveyor belt is la, eh, como la del super, ¿verdad? Donde, el, ¿cómo se llama? La... La banda transportadora. La banda, yeah, exactamente. Okay? okay, la banda, right? And um, grab means get, okay? Take, get. Tomar. Pick, uh -huh. yes. Agarrar. Agarrar, right? Agarrar. Agarrar. And uh, what was the other one? Tongues. Tongues. Uh, those things to pick things like tenazas or, see, sí, tenazas will be. Okay. Uh -huh. And okay. the last one? Uh, funnel. <clears throat> mm. It's um, like a, mm, a bowl, but it's like an industrial thing to pass it over, right? Uh, okay. like a deposit, but it's like a, a thing that it's on the way, right? Like uh, a bow. Yeah, but I will give you the, the, um, the word. I forgot a word to say this thing because okay. it's to... I guess it's an uh, embudo. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? Embudo. Oh, yes, but it's kind of like, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, what's the word? Embudo. Oh, yeah, it sounds like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has a peak where it passes through, right? See, oh, embudo, okay. embudo. Yeah, that's, the, I'm sorry, that's the word. Okay, yeah. embudo, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, teacher. All right. Let me find it out because I couldn't find it out. But yeah, it's this bowl. Yeah, embudo, embudo. Oh yes, embudo. Thank you very much, Rafael. You're welcome. Okay. I forgot the name. Uh, all right. Is there any other question right here? <clears throat> No questions about the vocabulary? Okay, let's look at the phrases we have with, I mean, in bold, in bold. Let's read them each. It says, push this red button, right? Push, it's a verb. And then we have a complement, this red button, right? It's an object over there. Next one, grab a pair of tongues. Grab is a verb. And then we have an object after it, the verb, right? A pair of tongues. Let's look at the next one. Pick every piece of chocolate. 
pick every piece of chocolate. It means that pick, it's a verb, right? Pick, it's like you choose the thing and then you put it into another uh, thing, right? <clears throat> pick every piece of chocolate. Pick is the verb. Every piece of chocolate is the object, right? Read this chart. Read is the verb. This chart is the object, right? Uh, check every piece. Check. What is read, teacher? I'm sorry? What is read? Read, lead, it's a verb. Read? Okay. Yeah, it's a verb, it's uh, lead, right? Mm -hmm. This chart. And check every piece, right? Okay. But then check is the verb, every piece is the object. The next one, place the defective chocolate. That means place, in this case, is colocar, right? Or put, right? Place is como colocar. Uh, it's a verb, right? Here, place is a verb. The defective chocolate is an object, right? Fill in, fill in is complete, right? Fill in, not only fill, but fill in the verb. Then we have a report as an object, okay? Entonces, then we can say that an imperative is used to give instructions. And it doesn't have, it's a sentence, but it doesn't have a subject, right? It doesn't have a subject. So let me uh, share with you these um, for you to visualize some other examples before going to the next activity, okay? We're gonna talk about the imperatives just a little bit. So the imperatives are commands, that's for sure. They are commands, but they can be also invitations. They can be also advice. They can be also commands, right? Instructions. And when, when we want to show someone how to do something, we use these kind of expressions. We use a verb in the base form and a complement. So we use imperative sentences as commands and instructions, right? Usually there is a director, there is a manager, there is a supervisor who provides the instructions or the guidelines how to do something, right? Or the process uh, of doing any, anything in the company. So if we go, we're going to see these examples. They can be in everywhere, right? They can be said in everywhere. Las podemos decir en cualquier contexto, ¿verdad? Y son algunos ejemplos, solo para tener una idea y recordar. Pass the salt. Maybe we are at the table and we say, pass the salt, right? Uh, move out of my way, right? <laughs> move out of my way. That's an imperative too, right? When you're angry, you say orders. You are saying prohibitions. You are saying things that you don't want every, uh, the other person just to you, right? Okay, shut the front door, please, right? It's asking for a favor or demanding something, right? Requesting for something. Find my letter, uh, my leather jacket. Uh, it means that maybe you are asking for a favor or maybe you are just, Mm, uh, requesting something, right? Be there at five. Be there at five. It's a command, right? It's a command. Clean your room, right? Maybe your wife or maybe your mom says, clean your room, right? Complete this by tomorrow. Complete this by tomorrow. Maybe, maybe your boss is giving you this order, right? Order. Uh, consider the red, the red dress, advice, right? Consider that red dress, 
they can ad uh, advise some uh, advice, right? Wait for me, requesting, right? Requesting, wait for me, get out, right? Get out, it's an imperative, it's uh, you are asking someone to do something. Make sure you pack warm clothes. Maybe you are in, on, a, on a trip, right? And you are preparing your suitcase. Uh, send me the files. Maybe the secretary, maybe a client, right? Is saying that. Please be quiet. Please be quiet. Okay? Vamos a ver. No voy a leer solo yo, vamos a ver, eh, me pueden ayudar, vamos a ver, um, le vamos a pedir a Rafael Antonio, can you read three from Be Nice until Andrew? Hi teacher, how are you? Hi Rafael, welcome. Uh, I'm can... sorry, I, I, I'm working, I work for uh, Parque, Parque Cusca, in my home, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Oh, to work. all right. Okay. Work. Okay. Okay. The, and now you're uh, at home. Answer, right? answer the, the, the phone, the phone. Oh, thank you. Ah, uh, le falta la H, miren. Answer uh, the phone. Answer the phone. Yes. Aquí no pronunciamos la W. Aquí decimos como una U. Answer, right? Answer. Answer, answer the phone. Yes. Correct. A ver, from here, from here, from the beginning. Here. Be nice to your friends. Uh -huh. Play ball. Uh -huh. A referee says, play ball, right? Play, play, play ball. Okay, yeah. play ball. Uh -huh. Answer the phone. Thank you very much. Uh, Claudia, continue, please. Uh, yes, teacher. Uh, work on the stats. On the stats. Stats the son stats. las estadísticas, right? Work on the stats. Okay, next. Yes. Uh, supervisor the employees. Supervise the employees. The, the employees. Mm -hmm. uh, bring your earphones. 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 Earphones, right? Uh, watch the video. Thank you very much, Claudia. Now let's look at Ellen Nilsson, please. Okay, teacher. Uh, watch the videos. All right. Sing the song. Mm -hmm. Repeat after me. Thank you very much. Henry, continue. Music, maestro. Yay. Practice your piano list lesson. 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 Do you homework? Okay, Henry, dígales a todos ahorita este último. Do your homework? <laughs> yes. Everybody, every, please. Every, every day, every night. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Henry. All right. These are some examples in everywhere everywhere you are always uh, having people telling you what to do or how to do something that's the use of imperatives but there are some imperatives that are very specific or there are areas where we use more the imperative sentences for example let's read the first one let's let's read the first one mm -hmm. Yes, Wilbur? Uh -huh. Sorry, teacher. Uh, Rahid, the, the Owen. Thank you very much, Rafael. Next one, Wilbur. Thank you very much, Rafael Antonio. And it's an instruction, yes. Mm -hmm. Use all in the plan. All right. It's an instruction, right? Uh, Rafael, Alexander. Don't eat all the cookies. All right. What is that? It's like a yes. prohibition also, right? A request. 
request or demand. Or a demand, yes. Or demanding something. Santos, can you read the next one, please? Stop feeding the dog from the table. Yes, and what is that? Request or demand. Or demand, yes. Demand. All right. Now let's look at the next one. Can you read it, please, Pedro? Come out with us tonight. Come out. Así sería. Mire, Pedro. Come out. Okay. Come out with us tonight. With us. With us. With us tonight. All right. That's an invitation. You see? And we are starting with the verb. You see? We are starting with the verb. It's an invitation. Malviel, can you read the next one, please? Please join us for dinner. All right, that's an invitation, right? Yes. Next one, please. Uh, I want to see Karen, please. Choose the Irish Wolfhound, know the German Shepherd. Okay, this is a piece of advice, right? Thank you. Blanca, can you read the last one? Um, choose the last one. Yes. Wear your gold necklace with that dress. Excellent. Advice. That's a piece of advice. Yes. That's advice. So imperatives can be used. A ver, para qué podemos usar entonces los imperativos? Giving instructions. Advice and request. Uh huh. And for invitations, right? And for oh, invitations, demands, demands uh -huh. también orders y también commands, okay? Commands. Hi, teacher. Hello. They have invitation for you. Okay, tell me. The assistance. Oh, thank you very much. I think Worth that's it. a piece of advice because if I don't do it, you know, they're going to... Um, tell me something over there right all right thank you very much yes we are going to call the roll guys please remember the requirements from Insafor. turn your cameras on and you have to say present when i call your names so today is the 23rd right september the 23rd andrea sofia benitez gomez no, Andrea, tonight. Blanca Alejandra Portillo Bermúdez. Carlos Ernesto Pérez. Present teacher. Present. All right. Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. Present teacher. Claudia Yamilet Coreas. Present teacher. Ellen Nilsson Aparicio de Del Cid. Present teacher. Eric José Hernández Campos. No, Eric tonight. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. Henry Alberto, uh, thank you, Hazel. Henry Alberto Pérez Rosales. Here I am, teacher. All right. Hernán Antonio Chacón López. Presente, teacher. Javier Antonio Cortés Martínez. Ah, oh, I always forget this. Juan Francisco Salmeron Alas. Karen Yamilet Rivas de Ayala. Present teacher. Magdieles Aú García Morales. Present teacher. Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz. Present teacher. Rafael Antonio Barrera Díaz. Present teacher. Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. Person is still teacher. All right. Rosa del Carmen Santa Maria Tobar. Santos Ezequiel Núñez Mejía. I am here, teacher. Great. Sa um, Wilber Alberto Pérez Méndez. Present teacher. Jose Abel Isaguirre Mendoza. Here, present teacher. All right. 
Pedro Alexander Osorto Sánchez. Present teacher. Okay. Okay, people, we have some, uh, something in the manual we want to fulfill. I mean, to uh, not fulfill, to complete. And it's the activity number three. All right, so we're going to the breakout rooms. You are going to practice the conversation and you're going to complete the activity number three. I will send you, no, I'm not going to send you. I'm going to show the slide for those who doesn't have access because of the devices. A ver, ahorita se las comparto acá. Y me hacen favor de hacer su screenshot. Para que todos puedan hacer la actividad. Practice the conversation and complete the pair work. All right. Ready? Ya agarraron el screenshot todos los que lo necesitan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Hello, Claudia. Teacher, me sacó de la reunión. Sí, y veo que le ha duplicado la, la... ¿O tiene dos devices conectados? No. No, la ha duplicado. Entonces la voy a asignar a otra sala, ¿ok? Vamos a ver si así puede accesar. Bueno, bueno, está bien. Ok. <coughs> ¿Le apareció ahí sala 4? No. A ver, Nada. ¿Ahora? Ahora sí. Ok. Hello, Mr. Roland. Today is your first day in the plan. My name is Miss Nunez, and I'm going to explain what you must do in the production line. Nice to meet you, Mr. Nunez. Where do you where do we start? First, you are in charge of stopping the conveyor belt. 
please push the push this red button. Second, grab a pair of, of tongs and pick every piece of chocolate. Read this chart and check every piece, pieces, piece, piece. Make sure each meets the specification in this chart. Third, place the defective chocolate in this funnel. Finally, fill, fill in a report at the end of the day about the defective pieces. Okay, van ustedes dos. If you want, I first. Okay, sure. Okay. Hello, Mr. Rodam. Today is your first day at the plant. My name is Miss Miss Nunez, and I'm going to explain you what you must do in the production line. Nice to meet you, Miss Nunez. Where do we start? First, you are in charge of stopping the conveyor belt. Please push this red button. Second, grab a pile of tongues and pick every piece of chocolate. Read this chart, chart and check every piece. Make sure each meets the specific. I'm sorry, the specifications in this chart. Debes estar seguro. Ajá. asegurar para cada las medidas de especificación de los gráficos o así hello hi teacher hi uh, where you are reading make sure it meets meets en este caso es como eh, cumple ok cumple las especificaciones right ok Mm -hmm. Asegúrese con que cada uno cumple. Entonces. Correct. Que, que cumple las especificaciones. De, de chart es, es gráfico, teacher, o, o cómo se entendería. Uh, the chart is like a document, or maybe they have a um, they have a um, a poster, right, where they have the specifications. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's like a document. Okay. The tercero, como como que what kind of como what? Que, Yes, try not to translate, all right? Uh, try to say the words in English. Ya ahorita ya la practicaron la, la conversación. Una vez, ya, ya, ya cambiamos de rol también. Ok, so you have to answer the questions. Ajá, ok. Uh -huh. in, in, in the first question, uh, request uh, the name or, or the. ¿Cómo se diría puesto el cargo? Uh, Who is. The person. Right. The person uh, is who is responsible for stopping the is Miss Mister Mister Roland. Sí. 
Right, continue. Okay, you are going to write, who is responsible for stopping the conveyor belt? Okay, the responsible for stopping the conveyor belt is Mr. Rollins, right? Okay. Then number two. The person of Mr. Rollins is responsible for this. What is the responsibility of the Stopping the conveyor, the, the, re, the responsibility are stopping the conveyor belt. And, and we're at the pay. Oh, uh, no, no. Pick this char and shed every piece. Is pick this char and shed every piece. Push, push this red button. Bueno, la que está en negrita son push this red button. They at. Entonces, seguiría la misma conversación. Sí. Glad Monday is Miss Núñez and I am going to explain what you must to in the production line. De ahí sigue Mr. Es que Mr. Roland prácticamente solo se, se solamente como que está escuchando eh, todo el procedimiento la... que va a tener que hacer, lo que le está explicando eh, Mr. Núñez. Correcto, correcto. Uh -huh. uh -huh. ah, bueno, pues ahora ustedes dos. Ahora sería de ver las preguntas. Tratemos, tratemos de contestarla. Uh -huh. De hecho, ni siquiera entendí mucho la, la conversación. Vaya, ahí yo... como me está preguntando que quién es el responsable de, de parar la, la, la máquina. De chocolate. Uh -huh. Sí, o sea, es una como una banda, parece una banda transportadora, algo así, se entiende. Entonces, en este caso, el responsable de parar la máquina sería Mr. Mister, mister Roland. Ajá, Mr. Roland. A ver. Está contestando a la, a la primera pregunta. Who is sí, number one. For stopping the. No leo. Con... Es que está bien negro, está bien es cierto. Conveyor belt. Uh -huh. ¿Lo amplío más? No, sí está bien. Bueno, yo sí lo veo, no sé. Eh, ¿Y no tienen el libro? No, no yo, yo no. no. Yo no. Quiero, ver si lo, quiero ver si lo puedo compartir del libro mejor. Lo tengo abierto el libro. Lo, quiero ver si lo puedo compartir. Hoy si es de allá me cuartito. Documento. Vaya. Cuando la gente son... 
Es la página, quiero ver, la 13 parece que, ¿verdad? Solo es así. ¿Ve? 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 Hola, hola. Hola, hola. Es la página 13, parece, ¿verdad? Sí, te escucho. Y la sí. página 13. Ups, como que me fui a la unidad número 3. Pero, ¿verdad? Unidad 2. Es que la revisamos, la revisamos, la revisamos, pero comenzar a revisar la mente. ¿Lo logro visualizar? Ahí se ve bien, yo lo veo bien. Vaya. O lo amplío más. All right. Now, um, how was the activity, guys? Easy? Yes, some easy. Okay, what's it easy? Good. I have a new vocabulary. 
Yes, we have to add some more vocabulary. Yes, we are learning more verbs. Remember, we need to learn the verbs. We need to, <clears throat> yeah, learn the verbs and the conjugations. But for the imperatives, we need to know verbs, actions, activities too give the orders to give the instructions how to do something, right? Okay, guys, so no, um, we want to listen to, we're gonna say only two of you. Okay, we want to listen to, just one moment. Yeah, something's happening here. One sec. Okay. <clears throat> now it is. Okay, Carlos Ernesto and Pedro Alexander, please role play the conversation. Okay. Okay. I, I'm starting. Yes, please. Hello, Mr. Roland. Today is your first day at the plant. My name is Mrs. Nunez, and I am going to the to explain what you must do in the production line. Nice to meet you, Ms. Nunez. Where do we start? First, you are in charge of stopping the conveyor belt. Please push the red button. Second, grab a pair of thumbs and pick every piece of chocolate. Read this chart and check every piece. Piece. Make sure it meets the specification in the chart. They place the defective chocolate, chocolate in this funnel. Finally, fill in a report at the end of the day about the defective piece. Thank you very much, Carlos and Pedro. Okay, we are going to... <clears throat> answer the questions we've got here based on this, uh, this conversation. Who is responsible for stopping the conveyor belt? Mr. Roland. Mr. Roland. Okay. Uh, para dar la respuesta, recordemos que hay que ordenar yes. la respuesta. Uh -huh. It is mm -hmm. Mr. Roland. Yeah, pero sería así, miren, en, en estas recordemos un poquito cómo se responde esta pregunta. Mr. Roland is, remember? Mr. Is. Roland is. Uh -huh. Bien, también podríamos responderlo. Mm, uh, they respond yeah. completo, ¿verdad? The, is Mr. Roland. The responsible for stopping responsible. Uh -huh, for stopping the conveyor belt is Mr. Roland. All right. Cualquiera de las dos is correct. Okay. What, uh, can you read number two, please, uh, Hernan? Hola. Can you read number two, please? Um, sorry, Again. Uh, no, uh, fears, pero no logro visualizar la... Uh, one second. 
Okay. Um, first, uh, you are a share uh, of stopping the conveyor belt. It's a first. And second, uh, grab a pair of stone and pick up every piece of chocolate. Um, uh, read this chart and check every piece. <coughs> Sure. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh, tears. Uh, please, the uh, please the detective chocolate in this in this final final. See. Mm -hmm. Finally, <coughs> in report and at the end in the day about the detective piece. Defective. 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 Defective mm -hmm. piece. Pieces, right? Pieces. Okay. Thank you, Hernan. All right. Then what are some of the responsibilities of Mr. Rowland, right? Or Mr. Rowland's responsibilities. Uh, <clears throat> in este caso, Podríamos decir las todas las cosas paso a paso, step by step of the process that he has to do. But in general, we can uh, get we can get um, with the sequence with the sequence words. We can um, make a summary, right? In general, what are some of Mr. Rowland's responsibilities? Okay, first, it's first. Okay. Uh huh. Stopping, yes, stopping the conveyor belt. And then? Every, every piece uh, is responsible for checking the pieces of chocolate. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, uh, filling a report at the end of the day. Very good. Mm -hmm. Filling a report. <clears throat> mm, stopping the conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. And after this, check or checking, right? Checking the checking the chocolate pieces, right? Checking the chocolate pieces he is he makes he has to uh, be sure, right? That 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 every piece of chocolate meets the specification, right? So checking the chocolate pieces pieces and Mm -hmm. Detecting placing, right? Placing. Yeah, placing. The defective uh, pieces apart. Okay. Apart in the Fiona, right? So, yeah. Feeling I report at the end of the, day, of the day. Excellent. Let's continue with number three. Who wants to read it? Uh, Blanca, do you want to read number three? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of machinery is there in your workplace? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I was so with my partner that my work is about code centers. Mm -hmm. So I think that it didn't have some machinery, but 
All right. The equipment, Correct. it could be computers. Okay. Computers, desk, laptops. Okay. Laptops, headsets, right? Yes. <clears throat> okay. A ver, alguien más quisiera contestar la número tres? Who wants to answer number three? About the machinery uh, that uh, there is in your places, in your workplaces. Uh, the kind of machinery is industrial? Yes. When we talk about the machinery, we are, yeah, talking about industrial and uh, to make something, right? Mm -hmm. To make a product, manufacturing, right? Mm -hmm. Ahí podemos diferenciar tres uh, words. Machinery, remember? Tools and equipment, right? Machinery, tools, and equipment. Machinery, it's like industrial in a factory, right? And maybe there are some machines that are more handy, but that's machinery too. There are tools, right? And there are equipment. Equipments are like office appliances, right? like the office appliances that you use, the printer, the computer, uh, <clears throat> the walkie-talkies and so on, right? The phones. Tell me, Rafael. Uh, in, my, in my work, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, chargers, um, bulldozers, mm -hmm. tractors, welding machines, and et cetera. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. You have like the concrete um, uh, um, for, cutters, for right? Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, construction. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, because you sell the equipment, right? The um, yes. machinery too. Mm -hmm. All right. Trots, they tractors too, right? So mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you say agricola, maquinaria agricola? Um, <clears throat> a, ay, la tenía en. Farmer, mm -mm. machinery? Yeah, you can no. use farmer, pero es también agricola. Eh, it's, ahorita se la busco bien, porque hay uh, varias palabras que podemos usar. Ok. I think two is farm machine. Yeah, you can use farming, but it's agricola too, right? It's agricola. Mm -hmm. Agricultural, yeah, agricola. Like this. Mm, I will, así se pronunciaría. Agricola. You see? Okay. Agricola. Yeah. So there are other words like farmers, but it is not, uh, or farming. Yeah. Farming. Mm. Yeah. You can use farming, uh, machinery or tools, right? Equipment. It's farming yeah, to produce these kind of products, right? In a farm. But yeah, it's agricola too. Okay. <clears throat> We have, we have a agricola machines with mm -hmm. uh, John Deere. Oh, okay, John Deere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. <clears throat> there, there was another word. 
I will look it up because I have the idea of another word, right? Agro industrial something. Yeah, right now I don't have it in mind, but I will look it up for you later, all right? Okay, guys. So John Deere is the brand that you sell, that you distribute. That's correct. All right, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, He's people. A specialist mm -hmm. in this type of machine, of, okay. of machines. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now, please, in the platform, let's go to the platform. Uh, go to the video conference number three. Scroll down and you're going to find the activity in the discussion label. It's how to use imperatives, how to use imperatives. There I posted uh, an activity. There is a link on it. Um, <clears throat> solo dura tres minutos. Okay, it lasts only three minutes. And I want you to see the video. All right, all right. I want you to see the video. I cannot play it right here, but you are going to see it by yourselves, right? ¿Ya pudieron accesar ahí en la plataforma? Sorry, teacher, I have a problem technicals, but I'm oh, ready. Technical problem. All right. For some reason, I'm having the, <clears throat> the same problem here, too. You know what? <clears throat> I'm having a process and my throat. I have a sore throat tonight. Try to drink the water, teacher. Yeah, and also Suffer I have video. some tea. Excuse me? Lo veremos individual, ¿verdad? Yes, yes. Because I want to ask you those questions, right? Okay. Solo dura tres minutitos, okay? It's a recipe. Yay, it's a recipe, yes. Todos lo pueden ver, ¿verdad? Yes. All right. Teacher, yo no lo encuentro. ¿Dónde está? Vaya, ahí en la plataforma. Usted se puede ir a la clase, a la videoconferencia número 3. And you, uh, o sea, usted se va aquí a la videoconferencia número 3. Esa es una forma de llegar. You scroll down. Eh, y llega hasta esta parte de acá. Usted le da clic y le va a llevar acá. Ok, gracias. ¿Pudo ahí? 
o puede, puede, si no puede por ese lado, le voy a enseñar de la otra manera. Está en el grupo de WhatsApp de Atucha. Ok, ok. I want to eat it. <laughs> Delicious, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember the Oscar and the capital. <laughs> Oscar and the capital what? He's a YouTuber. Oh, really? He cooks? Does he cook? Yes. Mm. Uh, you can write in YouTube the capital. Mm. He's Mexican. Is he? All right. With the capital, we learn to start carbon. <laughs> oh, really? Seriously? Ah, interesting. Tacos al pastor, pork belly. All right. Nice. Pide lo que quieras cuando quieras. Bienvenidos ya. Tu mundo al instante. Aquí tengo unos tres kilos de pork belly que ya sabes que es de la barriga de cerdo. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for the the <clears throat> the tip. Mm -hmm. Karen, you love the English accent. He, uh, he has a, a very nice accent. Yeah. Yeah. And he speaks really fast. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's difficult to understand what he, what he said. Yes, so this is a challenge for you guys. This is a challenge. Uh, okay, the questions that I... Um, Listed here are, what does Jamie Oliver do? What does Jamie Oliver do? What recipe does Jamie cook in the video? Chicken. What? Mm -hmm. Chicken and? Lemon. And? A smash. And lemon. Uh -huh. Lemon and smash. Sweet potato. Yeah. Sweet right. potato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How species. many? Space. Species, yes. Muy face. Yeah. But How the lemon is the, the lemon is the stock finish for the, the chicken. Yeah, it's like the main flavor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. the mm -hmm. lemon is the lemon for the light, for the finish, the talk. Yeah, the touch, right? Final touch. All right. How many ingredients does Jamie add to prepare the marinade? 
olive oil. Mm -hmm. uh, Ice. Uh, mm -hmm. Black pepper. All right. Salt. Mm -hmm. Ajo. Cayena. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Onion. Onions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lemon juice. Yes, and the skin, right? I don't know how do you say ralladura de limón. <laughs> uh, great, um, great skin lemon. Great yes, skin, skin lemon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Garlic. Mm. Olive Garlic. oil. Olive oil. Olive oil. Mm -hmm. All right. How much salt does he use for seasoning the marinade? Mm -hmm. It's but in English, I don't know. No, <laughs> he says just a little, a little of salt. A little of, a little of, of salt. salt. Yes, a little of And also there is another word, a pinch, pinch of pinch. salt. Mm -hmm. Like a pinch princess? Uh, no, no, no. It is no. Uh, P I N C H. Pinch. Pinch. Ah. Yes, pinch. Just like this. Pinch, right? And uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, la tarea ahí que les va a quedar sería write the recipe using imperatives, right? And the, sequ the sequence words. Okay. Ahora ustedes su trabajo será en, el, en la número 5 poner. Por ejemplo, como lo aprendimos, ¿verdad? First y luego el imperativo, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál es el imperativo en todo caso? Sería mix something, something, right? Then add something, something. Next, cut, right? The chicken breast, right? And finally, or the final touch, like the lemon, right? Okay, guys, it's 10.03 right now. It's 10.03. Ahí voy a esperar yo sus... Um, voy a esperar sus contestaciones ahí, ¿verdad? Sus respuestas para que participen en esa y me manden el, 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 el comentario ahí, ¿verdad? Los use of merit. Acuérdense, tienen la tarea normal, ¿verdad? Después de la clase acerca de los imperatives. Está también esa discusión. Hay una discusión anterior. O sea, que trabajo hay para que usted se divierta haciendo, ¿verdad? Eh, la que les decía yo así rapidito, regálenme un minutito solo para explicarles qué vamos a hacer. Vayan pensando en um, que van a hacer una presentación. Yo les voy a enviar un link para un video, ¿ok? Para un video, how, to make, uh, how do they make the glass bottles, all right, glass bottles. Entonces, todos los grupos, el día lunes, cuando hagamos los grupos, van a trabajar sobre ese proceso, sobre ese manufacturing process. Y vamos a poner en práctica los, las estructuras que hemos aprendido, ¿verdad? Hemos aprendido eh, sequence words, hemos aprendido what clauses y hemos aprendido imperatives hasta este momento. Vamos a aprender todavía uno más que eh, lo vamos a ir practicando poco a poco. Entonces yo les voy a enviar el video, van a comenzar por ver el video, les voy a enviar las instrucciones para la presentación, ok, que van a hacer para que ya vengan más o menos con su mente ubicada para el día lunes, ¿verdad? Ok. Nos quedamos ahí. Eh, voy a tomar la asistencia. I will call the roll. So please, everybody, remember the requirements from Insafor. Videos on and say friends. Andrea Sofía Benítez Gómez. Blanca Alejandra Portillo Bermúdez. Present. All right. Carlos Ernesto Pérez. Present. Okay. Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. Present teacher. Claudia Yamilet Coreas. Present teacher. Ellen Nilsson Aparicio de Del Cid. Present teacher. Okay. Eric José Hernández Campos. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. 
Henry Alberto Pérez Rosales. Thank you, Aisha. Henry Alberto. Present teacher. Good. Hernán Antonio Chacón López. Present teacher. Javier Antonio Cortés Martínez. Ella se llama Brianda. Ah, I remember. No. Siempre se me olvida que ponerle por acá. Juan Francisco Salmerón Alas. Karen Jamilet Rivas de Ayala. Present teacher. Magdiel Esaú García Morales. Present teacher. Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz. Present teacher. Rafael Antonio Barrera Díaz. Present teacher. Ok, Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. Present teacher, I stay oh. here, but the uh, cell phone don't let me put the camera. Oh, all right. All right. Thank you very much for letting me know. Uh, Rosa del Carmen Santa Maria Tobar. Santos Ezequiel Núñez Mejía. Present, present teacher. Wil, <coughs> Wilber Alberto Pérez Méndez. Present teacher. Ok. José Abel Izaguirre Mendoza. Here present teacher. Pedro Alexander Osorto Sánchez. Present teacher. Ok. Okay, then guys, thank you very much for your patience and let us meet um, next Monday, right? Okay, do your homework, you practice your vocabulary, practice your English, see you Monday, bye. Bye, bye. good night. Very good. Thank good you. Nice, you Monday. Good very good good night. Night. Have a nice Have weekend. Nice weekend, everybody. Uh, good night and good weekend. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> bye bye. Okay, Carlos Ernesto, here we are. Tell me, how can I help you tonight? Uh, you're muted. Hi, teacher. Hi. I, I need help you. Um, in in what classes? Oh, the what classes? All right. Uh, hasta este momento, ¿qué es lo que ha comprendido? A ver. Um, bueno, lo, los ejemplos que vimos entendí, por ejemplo, algunos, pero eh, mi duda es, por ejemplo, eh, le voy a mostrar pantalla. Uh -huh. bueno, por ejemplo, acá. Uh -huh. en, en estos, uh -huh. eh, aquí va, por ejemplo, en el 3, que si, eh, que si, que yo no sé eh, dónde ella, este, tiene que comenzar, ah, tiene que comenzar, y, y aquí en el, en el, los closes, ¿por qué se usa I y no she? Ah, Because the, porque la um, primera oración, si usted se fija, en realidad el, el sujeto es I, ¿ok? El sujeto es I. Si se fija, este es otro tipo de clause que tenemos aquí, es otro tipo de cláusula, where she has to start. Where, where she es como acompañando el I don't know. ¿Qué es lo que no sabe? Dónde comience ella, dónde comience ella, ¿verdad? Entonces, el sujeto en realidad de la oración es I. Mm. Ok, entonces, eh, como él lo está diciendo, I don't know where she has to start. What I would do, right? Uh -huh. Porque el sujeto soy yo, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y, y digamos, el, el, la traducción... Porque también me, me pierdo un poco en la traducción de, 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 de word clauses. Uh -huh. eh, porque aquí, por ejemplo, ¿cómo se interpretaría eh, lo que yo necesito o lo que usted, lo que usted necesita? O... Exactly. Exactamente. Aquí no es solo qué. Aquí uh -huh. es lo que. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Lo que mi amigo hizo, lo que... Exacto. Debería ser lo que yo debería ser. Así. Uh -huh. Exacto. Sería, yeah. uh -huh. De ahí, este, no, no comprendí en, en, la, en la presentación 
es la diferencia entre cuando era una oración o era una interrogación el uso de estas. De las cláusulas. De las cláusulas, sí. Ok, tenemos que entender una cosa. Yo les hablaba de la estructura. La estructura de una cláusula es precisamente la palabra what, luego tiene un sujeto y tiene un verbo, ¿verdad? Pero por sí sola no tiene significado. Si usted fi se fija, si yo digo solo what you need, no significa nada, ¿verdad? What you need uh -huh. es solo como decir eat, right? So what you need, le falta la otra parte de la oración. Entonces, la estructura es que es una cláusula que depende, para tener significado, depende de que exista otra cláusula. Eso es una de las cosas. La otra cosa, o, o, otra parte, ¿verdad? La otra cosa es que es la palabra what, el sujeto y el verbo, ¿verdad? Lleva la palabra what, lleva el sujeto y lleva un verbo, pero por sí sola no tiene significado. Yeah. ¿Okay? Ahí no llevamos auxiliares, porque no es pregunta, es lo que hablaba yo. Entonces, aunque vaya dentro de una pregunta, quiere decir que hay una pregunta principal. ¿Ok? Esta es una, esta es una parte que depende de otra cláusula. La otra cláusula es la independiente, pero la necesito para darle sentido a esta. Entonces, teníamos el ejemplo ahí de, uh, no lo recuerdo, no lo tengo en mente, lo voy a buscar. Sería, mm, <coughs> sería por ejemplo, ah, en el ejercicio que hicimos. Yo tengo aquí las láminas que iba. Vaya, en la número dos, donde decía, ¿es it true? Esa es una pregunta, la número ah, dos. En esta. Uh -huh. eh, eh, tiene que subir, es la número seis. La que usted tiene ahí es la número seis. Ah. Ya. Yeah. Ok. Ajá. Entonces, if you read number two, si mira ahí la pregunta, es una pregunta. ¿okay? Sí. Entonces. La pregunta principal es que si sí es verdad, ¿ok? Esa es la pregunta principal. Uh -huh. ¿Es verdad que qué? ¿Verdad? Uh -huh. Entonces, ¿es verdad what she said? Right? Ahí no voy a usar what did she say, ¿ok? Porque ya tengo la pregunta principal. Uh -huh. ¿Ya? Entonces, la cláusula no necesita ningún auxiliar ahí. El auxiliar lo utilizaría nada más en el caso de un negativo, ¿verdad? De un negativo que es lo que no hemos visto, ¿ok? Uh -huh. Entonces, ahorita todo hemos visto afirmativo. Y ahí no necesita ningún... Eh, eh, auxiliar, ¿verdad? Es una eh, cláusula que depende de otra. No es la pregunta principal. ¿Ya? Si, si estuviera en una pregunta. ¿Ok? Ok. Uh -huh. Ok. Sí, ya me quedó más claro. Teacher. Ok. Sí. Lo otro es que, ¿qué me puede usted recomendar para yo adquirir vocabulario? Que es Realmente me siento bastante corto de vocabulario. Ah, y muy bien, a la hora sí. de estructurar, bueno, aparte de que necesito practicar bastante a la hora de estructurar las oraciones, siento que me cuesta precisamente por falta de vocabulario. ¿Qué me podría recomendar? Ok, mire, la primera cosa es que yo le diría una, una eh, que es como elemental, digamos, ¿verdad? Es repetir. Repetir cada vez que usted escucha una palabra, usted la tiene que repetir. No solo, ah, la escuché y entendí lo que significaba, pero no la grabé en la mente. Entonces, se nos pierde de nuestro repertorio, ¿verdad? Entonces, la primera es siempre repetir. Aunque yo ya me sepa las palabras, ¿verdad? Repetirla, repetirla con decirla, ¿ok? Decirla. 
Y la otra estrategia es que usted se la va y se la cuente a otro. Así no se le va a olvidar. ¿Ok? Uh -huh. Si usted se la aprendió, eh, vaya y cuéntele a otro. Ahora, ¿cómo va a adquirir estas palabras? Estas palabras usted puede ir por temas. Por ejemplo, eh, yo siempre, eh, el consejo mío, ¿verdad? Es que, eh, por ejemplo, usted está en el baño, por ejemplo, bañándose, qué sé yo. Todas las cosas que usted está mirando, nómbrelas, ¿ok? Nómbrelas y busque cómo se llama esto que estoy usando, ¿ok? Las cosas que llevo puestas es otro tema, ¿verdad? Entonces, Empezar a agarrar cosas que están sobre mí, cosas que están cerca, cosas que hago todos los días, cosas que están en mi trabajo. Cuando yo voy en la calle, lo que voy viendo, lo voy nombrando en English. Porque realmente usted conoce muchas palabras, pero se olvidan. O sea, mm -hmm. a la hora que me hacen la pregunta... Uh, uh, me pasa. Ustedes me preguntan, mire, ¿cómo se dice tal cosa? I know the word. Yo, yo conozco qué es lo que me está preguntando y en alguna vez lo usé, en algún momento lo he utilizado, pero a la hora que me lo preguntan, se queda así como, eh, sí, um, o se me vienen tres palabras a la vez, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, es necesario, ¿verdad? Que así como las olvidamos, ¿verdad? Las tenemos que Estás recordando, estás recordando. Y una de las cosas es esa. Usted puede ir por temas, digamos, en la cocina. Si usted se mete a la cocina, mira todas las cosas que están ahí. Ok, voy nombrando las cosas. No necesariamente tomarme el, el, el tiempo que no tengo, ¿verdad? Sino que a la hora que yo preparo mi desayuno, por ejemplo. Si usted prepara su desayuno o su esposa está preparando el desayuno, y usted mira cómo lo está haciendo, entonces usted nombra cada cosa, cada acción, cada verbo, ¿verdad? Que se realiza en ese ambiente. O, por ejemplo, si sale a algún lugar a pasear, ¿verdad? Ver qué cosas están ahí y nombrarlas, nombrarlas. Y buscar la manera de constantemente traerlas a memoria. Porque, mire, yo le puedo decir, mire películas y hágalo porque es bueno. pero eh, usted lo va a ver así como perdido, ok, o sea, no perdido usted, sino que va a ver de, es mucho como mucho. para agarrar parte por parte, ¿verdad? Entonces claro, usted puede verlo y es necesario porque le afina el escuchar, ¿verdad? Pero cuando usted vea películas, véalas eh, con audio de inglés ¿verdad? Y con subtítulos en inglés, que le ayudaría mucho también, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y le eh, ¿Usted qué carrera tiene? Yo soy administración de empresa, estudié administración de empresa. Ok, entonces finanzas, puede también, como usted ya se sabe todo lo de su carrera, cuando usted mira una conferencia o busca eh, alguna cuestión relacionada con su actividad, eh, con su profesión, ¿verdad? Usted va a comprender eso. Yo no comprendería sus, bueno, yo tal vez sí en administración, pero, eh, por ejemplo, usted no comprendería términos médicos, por eso no eh, lo voy a mandar a que vea conferencias médicas o películas de doctores, ¿verdad? Para aprenderlos no está bueno. Para cuando ya he aprendido lo mío, ir agregando vocabulario, sí. ¿Verdad? Entonces mi, mi mayor consejo es que si usted va a ver películas para aprender inglés, que sean relacionadas con actividades que usted hace, ¿verdad? Con cosas que usted conoce para que empiece a eh, identificar las palabras, decir las palabras, contarle a otro la película, ¿verdad? Contarle a otro las palabras que aprendí. Y hay, una, hay un método que usamos con los alumnos pequeños. Y es que los hacemos que escriban, que hagan su propio glosario, ¿verdad? Su propio glosario de las palabras que no conocen, de lo que se va eh, leyendo en el libro, por ejemplo, o de, las, de lo que toman de la clase, ¿verdad? O de las actividades que los mandamos a investigar. Entonces, que se haga un glosario. Y la definición la deben poner en inglés, ¿ok? No en español. Así se adquiere el vocabulario de sinónimos, ¿verdad? De sinónimos o de palabras relacionadas 
y ya se crean familias de palabras, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, todo va como en una cadenita. Empecemos por lo que tenemos aquí puesto, ¿verdad? Y luego vamos expandiendo, luego vamos expandiendo. Es bueno, muy bueno escuchar música, es bueno leer libros, es bueno, pero hágalo primero, 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 con lo que usted ahorita ha empezado a conocer o que ya conocía. Poco a poco va a ir agregando, ¿verdad? Poco a poco va a ir agregando. Así es. Ok. Uh -huh. Bueno, muchas gracias, teacher. La verdad que ha sido muy enriquecedor este espacio. Así Qué que bueno. se lo agradezco. Qué bueno, me alegro. Okay, no problem. Here I am, and that is what I'm for. Okay, so okay. Um, see you Monday and have a very good weekend. All right. Okay, thank you, teacher. Okay, Carlos. Bye. Bye.